it's uh, really uh, a privilege to be introduced by uh, Doug, who, who I have known for many years, and uh, Al Warnick, one of the uh, faculty here who uh, has who, who's asked me on several occasions to be here, and I've, I've tried to make it, but this is the first time I've actually uh, uh, been able to be here. Um, let me start off by saying, uh, sort of doing the uh, a little bit of a connection. So if I said uh, BYU 30 seconds, Utah 10 minutes, and Utah State 38 minutes, what am I talking about? That's right, how long are you in the game for? So, so uh, Utah State uh, definitely wins that. Uh, and my daughter is taking nursing classes here at uh, my satellite, uh, so, uh, so she wanted me to put in a word just in case there's anybody uh, grading her paper. That's uh, Ashley. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about here today is uh, as... Uh, as, as, as Doug said, we're going to talk about, uh, hopefully, some confirming ideas, things you already know about leadership, but also I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the new ideas uh, that, uh, that we've been playing around with uh, over the last 10 years. I just wrote a paper for an Indian uh, leadership journal, and actually I finished it this morning, and uh, the, the, the request was to reflect on the last 10 years that uh, Dave and I have been writing. So we've written five books together in, in 10 years. So, uh, so we really feel like we've got a point of view on, on leadership. And uh, it's uh, like if you write one book, you've got a point. If you've got two books, you've got a line. If you've got three books, you've got a triangle. Four books is area. And uh, five books is area with a little dot in the middle. Uh, according to my uh, article. I don't know what five is, uh, but a bigger, a uh, little bit more area. So, uh, so we're going to talk about basically two ideas here. Well, three. One is uh, this idea of results-based leadership. The second is um, leadership from the outside in, which is one of the themes that we've been, uh, we've been really harping on and, uh, and trying to apply in a, in a, globally with uh, leading firms. And the third idea is um, this idea of uh, leadership attributes. So, so those are the, the three, uh, three ideas. So these are the, actually, uh, uh, the top line is the, the books uh, minus one that Dave and I have written in the last 10 years. And then uh, Dave's also written a, a bunch of other things in, in HR. So uh, besides our friends and family, nobody else reads our books. So uh, we really would uh, ask you to uh, do as... Uh, as uh, Doug suggested, and, and, uh, and find a book that looks interesting. Okay, 30 seconds. What I'd like to do is divide the room in half. So if you're on this half, you're in A, and this half is B. And if you're not sure where the line is, I don't care. But just somewhere uh, B and A, and just 30 seconds, if side A answers the question, if my organization is to be successful over the next 18 to 24 months, Leaders in our organization must, so that's this side, just with your person beside you. And on this side, the three to five most critical challenges facing my organization over the next 18 to 24 months are dot, dot, dot. Now, I know some of you are students, so um, ask it for the U.S. Uh, you know, answer it for the, for the United States. Uh, or if you're in a part of an organization, uh, answer it for that. But... Uh, we're just trying to get some themes out here. So 30 seconds, go. Try to answer your responses to those two questions. Okay, on this side, this was A, right? I've got it right. This was A. Just call out a few of the th your answers to this question, okay? Oh. If, if I had a carrot, I would throw it at you. Uh, uh, good job. Okay. Oh, you already got a carrot. This is uh, this is somebody that needs attention. Okay. Uh, who, what, what else have you? What, what else have we got over here? Adaptable. So recognition, adaptable. What else? Retention. What else? Communication. So, if my organization is to be successful over the next 18 to 24 months, leaders in our organization must. Be good at reward and recognition programs. They must be good at recognizing people. They must be good at 
retaining people. What do I forget? One more. They must know how to execute. What else? They've got to understand their businesses. Okay, what about this side? What's the, uh, what did you have over here? What are some of the business challenges? And if you're a student, what are some of the challenges facing the U.S. economy? Okay, so budget cuts, growth. What else? Handling growth with reduction in staff. Okay. So we got two sets of issues. What's the problem with, with this? Look at the name. Let me read you the name of this conference. Leadership and Performance, the Virtuous Cycle. Okay. So on this side, we tend to have a list. Let me tell you why we wrote the first book. <laughs> we tend to have a list of attributes from Group A. These are competencies that leaders need. They need to know how to do recognition. They need to know how to uh, do employee retention. That may be more of a result, the retention one. What were some of the others we heard over here? They need to know how to be flexible, how to execute. Uh, so uh, leaders need to be, I don't know about you two state, but uh, kind, true, chaste, benevolent, virtuous. I mean, it's a... It's a list of, of attributes that everybody has the same set. We'll talk more about that uh, later. Over here, we heard about growth, about budget cuts, about uh, are these things connected? When we, think, when we ask the question about leaders, when we ask the question about business challenges, we tend to get two lists. That's why the, the theme of the conference is, you know, leadership and performance a virtuous cycle, because there ought to be a virtuous cycle, and you get the virtuous cycle by connecting leadership competencies to organization results. And the organization results aren't just financial results. We call that AIG, we call that uh, Citigroup, we call that the big global mess that we're in, and especially in financial services, but it's also customers, employees, investors, right? It's a uh, there's a number of stakeholders that leaders are supposed to build competencies so that they deliver organization results. So the, so the idea of connecting the two is something that, you know, for the last 10 years we've been, you know, talking about. And it's implied, but if you look at the leadership development curriculums of most major companies, they're competency-based. They're all about what individual leaders, what are the competencies that leaders need. If you think about, think about the last 10 best-selling books over the last 10 or 20 years in leadership, what are the names of those books? Authenticity, Judgment. Um, what else is out there right now? Um, what's that? Trust. Um, emotional intelligence. So most of the time, leadership writers write about competencies. And we're saying it's half right. The other half is that leaders have to develop those competencies so that they get results for the stakeholders of the business, so that they can deliver the cuts in a way that doesn't kill growth, so that they can cut fat, not muscle, so that they can, again, for the various stakeholders, so that they can and I'll, and I'll go to this side so that we have employee retention of the best and the brightest. Uh, so anyway, it's both results and attributes. Okay, so here's the question then. If we have better leaders, if you're going to do leadership development in this economy, this is why um, people are cutting their budget in, in leadership, but they're not completely cutting their budget because there's a number of companies Every two years, we do the top companies for leaders study that, uh, with Hewitt that's published in, in Fortune. <clears throat> and one of the things that tends to be true is that the companies that really do a good job of developing leaders for their own company, and usually leaders for other people's companies too, tend to continue to invest in leadership in up and down cycles. That doesn't mean that they do it <clears throat> with exactly the same fervor that they do in good times but uh, it tends not to go away. 
So the answer to the question is leader, leaders create value for the stakeholders of their business. So let's just go along around the uh, uh, customer share. So if we have better leaders, some companies, they'll have greater share of customer. They'll delight their customer in different ways. They'll have better, uh, if you're in pharmaceuticals right now, you'll attract partners that'll help you find compounds. You'll, uh, you'll increase employee competence, uh, commitment, and contribution. So we'll have employees who not only have the skills to do the things that are needed, but they'll also be committed to doing that. So if you have low competence and high commitment, you'll have dumb employees who try really hard, and the opposite would be smart ones who don't care, right? So we, we, we want both competence, commitment, and contribution <clears throat> is this area of, you know, are we working in companies that provide meaning? Is there sort of a vision or aspiration for being an employee at this company? Or is it all just about, uh, um, you know, drudgery? Line managers need to build organization capabilities. Um, organization capabilities are things like uh, leadership, collaboration, talent, uh, speed of change, culture, uh, and so on. Community and reputation. Um, are we building uh, socially responsible organizations? If we have better leaders, are we likely to build organizations that people want their children to, uh, to work for in the future? And then investor intangibles, are we building organizations where the confidence in those leaders allows, um, allows high investor confidence in the future? One of the things that we've been looking at uh, for about six or seven years now is the difference in market value of various uh, companies within the same industry. And so you'll have two companies with the same earnings can have very different market values because of the level of confidence that, the, that one company will have over another in terms of uh, what they're going to be able to do for future earnings. So one of the things that's been true, even in this economic meltdown, is that when you look at it by industry, there are still companies out there that are really delivering high confidence compared to the competitors in the same industry. So market values are still, you know, there's real differentiation of market value. And one of the really key drivers of that is, uh, is quality of leadership. The other two tend to be industry attractiveness and uh, sort of the performance of the, of the organization itself. But quality of leadership are the people who make the, the choices of which industries we're going to be in and, and how good the, the performance of the company will be. I'm not going to go into this, but again, this is in your, in your notes. And just, you know, by stakeholder on the left, just some examples of some measures. So our challenge to people in answering this question is one of the ways you, you ensure that leaders... Uh, deliver performance and that there's this virtual cycle between leadership competencies or leadership attributes and results for stakeholders is that you don't focus on very many of these. Right now, you should say, gee, what are three of those uh, measures that really make sense for our company right now? And then tie leadership, quality of leadership. We need to build leaders who can deliver those results. And that ought to be what the intent of uh, of leadership would be for, for that company. Okay, now we're going to look at a quick review of some of the trends that we see in leadership. Interestingly, again, this, the field of leadership is interesting because things just don't change very often. This is a field that uh, people do the same things over and over again. If you look back 30 years at a textbook in both HR and in leadership, the titles, the chapter titles, tend to be the same chapter titles over and over and over again. So the question is, what's the half-life of knowledge in this field? What's really changing? What, uh, what should we be looking at? And these are some f a few ideas on that. Who's this group? Does anybody know? Microsoft in 1977. How many of you would have invested in these guys? Which one is Bill Gates? Yeah, far left. By the way, Bill Gates in this picture, if you can imagine, the summer before this picture was taken, he had gone to DEC and made a proposal 
for a big consulting project that he was proposing while he was still in high school with, uh, with DEC. And uh, it didn't work out, and that's what led him to, uh, to start Microsoft. But uh, interesting group of guys. Has Microsoft done, think about Microsoft and Apple right now. So the idea of leader and leadership. Leader is all about me as an individual. Leadership is building an organization capability that builds leaders at every level. How has Microsoft done since Bill Gates left? I mean, has the company fallen apart because of the leadership challenge? I mean, they've had other problems, granted, but losing Bill Gates did not, uh, did not kill Microsoft. What about Apple? What's going on with Apple right now? Steve Jobs are trying to hide his health issues to the public. So it's all about Steve Jobs. It's all about Microsoft, right? That's the difference between leader and leadership, right? Whatever the right answer turns out to be for, uh, for Apple, they just have really mishandled the future confidence of Apple's performance because they're sticking it on Steve Jobs' shoulders and he's sick. That's really different than building leadership in an organization and having somebody to take over. So that's, so the first transition is from individual to organization. The second one here is from inside to outside. So uh, here's a, where is this? Ontario license plate. Uh, so the shift in assets from, uh, from me to you. Um, so the idea here is leadership and leaders are also have stakeholders on the outside of the organization as well as stakeholders on the inside of the organization. But it's really interesting how if you look at these two shifts, and they're not shifts from two, they're, they're more like and shifts, right? Leaders and leadership and inside and outside. Which quadrant do you think most companies spend most of their time on? Yeah, right here. This is the quadrant. Again, think of those leadership books I was asking you to think about. What do we write about? Who writes those books? Right? It's psychologists typically writing books about how to be a more effective or a more competent leader. So the first shift takes you from being competent to building an organization capability or a leadership engine. So we're going to look at selection, we're going to look at development, compensation. We're going to be sure that those uh, HR systems, at least, are aligned with, uh, with what we say we want in competent leaders. The second shift, though, or leader and leadership, the second one takes us uh, from leaders, so it's about the individual leader or the competent leaders to celebrity leaders. So you think about people, I've just been talking about Steve Jobs and and Bill Gates, those kind of people in your organization are a real double-edged sword for, for good and for bad. Because what they do as individuals, they attract capital and interest and PR in your company. But if that's all that there is, then, and you retire or get hit by a truck or get cancer or whatever, then it can become a real problem for you. What we talk about is leadership brand is an organization capability that allows, that, that, that creates confidence in leaders at every level from external as well as internal stakeholders. So customers, investors, employees, all look at the leaders in this organization and have confidence in the future because we'll make the right choices, we'll do the right things in the future based on the quality of people that we're developing for the challenges that we have in the future. So, so I talked all about that. Now what I'm going to do is go right down to this quadrant because we spent 10 years talking about leadership systems and celebrity leaders and leadership brand. Wrote a book about investors and wrote a book about customers. But the field is still in this left-hand quadrant, left-hand lower quadrant. So what we did about... Uh, Two years ago, when uh, I'm affiliated with uh, Exec Ed at the University of Michigan, and this is where we first started, and then we started doing it in, in other clients all over the world. 
we started asking the people to bring their leadership competency models to the program that we were running. And we took the name of the company off the top of the paper and we posted them around the wall. So you'd have 20 or 30 people from 20 or 30 different companies and we'd take the name of the company off. So you'd have Walmart and Dell and uh, Deutsche Bank and Abu Dhabi Investment Authority. So all different kinds of companies. You post the, their leadership competency models on the, on the wall. We'd ask them to do two things. One is find your own competency model. And the second was attach the competency model to the, uh, to the company that it belongs to. How do you think they did? Most people couldn't find it. I mean, it was only random that people, people could find their own. So we began thinking, wow, this is really interesting. People are spending sort of millions of dollars and incredible amounts of time developing competency models which are not unique. They're all, they're, they basically are pretty generic. They're, they're all saying the same kinds of things. So we went and talked to a number of thought leaders. So we picked 16 thought leaders around the world and asked them two questions. One is what percentage of leadership is basically the same, and two if, two, if there are common rules for any leader, what are they? So when we got the answers back, it was between about 20 and 80 percent, but the average was about 60 to 70. So in other words, 60 to 70 percent of leadership is the same for every company. And it doesn't even matter if you're a government or a, or a, or for profit or big or small, they were all saying, that the, all of the research that we could find and distill down said that there were these, uh, these, these similarities that completely outweighed the differences. So let me uh, talk about the value of what we're doing here and, and show it in, a, in, a, in another way and then tell you what those uh, similarities were. So count as high as you can in the next uh, 30 seconds because I've been talking for 45 and you've been doing it anyway. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds, count as high as you can on this chart. Okay, stop. Who got the highest? Anybody above 20? Anybody 15? You got 15? What did you get back there? 15. 15. Anybody beat 15? Okay. I'm going to ask you to do it again, but this time I'm going to help you. Count as high as you can in 30 seconds. Okay, did anybody get to 15? Who got the highest? Anybody get to 30? Back there? How, how'd you get? Blue shirt, right at the back. You got to 30? Anybody beat 30?